Okay, we'll play just a little. I begin to think, Wilson, said Sholmes, turning his head languidly in my direction, that there is more to this case than that which we have observed. Indeed, that there may be another part to this story that we are yet to discover. His eyes wandered, following the steam rising from his cup of herbal tea, leading him to the distant memory of that snowy evening. To the young lady collapsed on the pavement along Briar Road, and to the knife in her back. Lit in the soft glow of gas lamps, a most extraordinary scene had been set. And under the cover of a light fog, the curtain had risen silently on the insoluble mystery of our invisible killer. Okay. No, not at all. Hmm. Oops, sorry about that. Really, I'm sorry. Three whole pounds. London is a scary place. Good morning to you in this early hour. Are we... well... Good morning to you, Lord Chief Justice. Yes, I believe you had a very comprehensive initiation into British courtroom practices. Yes, it was very eye-opening, thank you. And in accordance with your instructions, Mr. Naruhodo Naru performed his duty to the end. Yes, I've already been apprised of events. You conducted a remarkable defense. You may consider the test passed. Oh. No longer are you a student from the Empire of Japan. You may henceforth claim to be a fully-fledged lawyer. My country is delighted to welcome young talent from such a remote eastern island. Um, thank you very much. Okay. Now, in view of your new appointment, I have a fresh case in mind for you. I'd like you to take it on at once. I trust that won't be a problem. Another case already. Nothing trains a lawyer better than practical experience. I'm sure I don't sense dissatisfaction, do I? Uh, it's just that yesterday's trial ended unusually. Haven't quite come to terms with it. What's to come to terms with? The man was cleared. What more were you hoping for? Things ended pretty weirdly. Well, you needn't let it trouble you for a second longer. What do you mean, Lord Strongheart? Magnus McGilded passed away, immediately following the trial. Should have taken that thousand guineas. I have 19 minutes and 41 seconds until my next engagement. Time enough to talk. <laughs> and uh, I guess we will talk just a little bit. Um, I don't understand what happened. How can he be dead? After the trial concluded yesterday, there was a great commotion at the Old Bailey. As you'll presumably recall, an omnibus had been wheeled into the courtroom. Yes, of course, that was the scene of the crime which Mr. McGilded had been accused of. Hmm, precisely. Well, while the bailiff's attention was diverted by some other matter, the omnibus went up in flames. That is being investigated as we speak. 
but already. Police have identified a corpse found inside the charred shell of the carriage as that of Mr. McGilded. The man must have slipped inside whilst the bailiff's attention was elsewhere. It is also being investigated as we speak. An inspection of the omnibus. <laughs> Not to my knowledge. I don't believe Scotland Yard had any intention of re-examining the carriage. Oh? Never mind that now. The Yard is making a thorough investigation. This matter is no longer any concern of yours. Leave it to the police. Poor McGilded. So, how did you find your first taste of our country's Supreme Court? Oh, uh, it fucking sucked. I hated it. Mr. Naruhoto means that the whole experience was steeped in the solemnity of Great Britain's long history. It's really a world apart from our own judicial system in Japan, which is only a few short decades old. Thank you, Suzato. And you seem to have a way of failing to find the right ones. How did you read my mind? The judicial system here is the most advanced in the world. Learn all you can. Is it? It was fortunate that your very first trial was a simple affair. A simple affair? As I believe I mentioned yesterday morning, it was a trial you couldn't lose. I don't mean to be contrary, but the case was anything but simple. The circumstances were so incriminating, I was stunned when I first heard them. I'm still finding it hard to believe we managed to get a favorable verdict. <laughs> Is something funny? No, no, my, my apologies. However, the fact is that you did receive the not guilty verdict you set out to achieve. And that can only be attributed to exceptional talent. Wouldn't you agree? Well, I don't know about that. Well, never mind. You exceeded my expectations, I freely admit. That much at least is an undeniable truth. Which is precisely why I have prepared the new case for you that I mentioned before. What the fuck is going- This is sus, Jay. Alright, what are we working with here? It's nothing so alarming or quite as urgent as your last assignment. In fact, the case is completely different. That is to say, no one has died as yet. And the trial will not be today. There is plenty of time to research the case thoroughly. Saurus Code, thank you for the 16 gifties. 23 hours, 43 minutes, and 19 seconds to be precise. Yes, I'm confused, that's all. Ah, yes, I nearly forgot. There is one similarity with yesterday's case. Once again... There's currently no one to advocate for the defense. If the situation remains unchanged, the trial will start tomorrow with the defendant unrepresented. If that happens, I need not remind you of the outcome. How are you? You might. Thank you for the five. Well, your time is up. You will have to excuse me. I would advise you to begin making preparations for tomorrow's trial. After all, the clock is ever ticking. There is now but 23 hours, 26 minutes, and 39 seconds until the court sits. And one more thing, Mr. Naruhodo. There is something I should like to ask you. Yesterday, you remarked upon something that you intend to see through the will of your late compatriot, Mr. Asogi. I would be interested to hear exactly what you mean by that. Inside 34 seconds. Oh, well, uh, 
Kazuma always said that he wanted to learn how the greatest justice system in the world works so he could change hours in Japan. Now that he's gone, I'd like to work towards that myself. And there's another thing. Another thing, continue. On the way here, on the steamship, he said something to me. There's something very important I have to do. What would that be? He never had the chance to tell me. I suppose he would have done if he... Mm. Well, thank you for an enlightening decision. I urge you both to focus your attentions on the matter at hand. I've taken the liberty of summoning the police inspector in charge of the case. He'll be able to appraise you of the details. Oh, hi, you. So, I wish you the best of luck, and I bid you farewell. All right, and that's where we're going to call it. What do you think? Okay. Um. Lovely weather. What's the weather got to do with anything? All right. Ah, you stinking ass Brit. Listen to me, you young Japanese upstart. Some frippery about the weather don't get every English gent eaten out of your hand, you know? Uh, okay. Oh my God, he's going to town. I'm a busy man, a very busy man. There's a crime scene to investigate, but I'm here having a Give the likes of you are talking to. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you imagine what the other officers there will be saying them? Um? Haven't seen Gregson anywhere, have you? Nah, he's too busy with the big wigs these days. All because of some bumpkin. Oh no. God, he is really going down on that shit. This is Mr. Ryunosuke Naruhodo, a defense lawyer. Eh? It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I'm Mr. Narahodo's judicial assistant. Su it. Eh? Okay. It's lovely weather we're having today, isn't it? It is unseasonably fine, I grant ya. We got a Guido. London a Guido. winters don't see your of sunshine. <clears throat> Lord Strongheart has asked me to fill you in on the case. Name's Tobias Gregson. Inspector Gregson to you. I'm from Scotland Yard. Oh, God. Oh, wonderful. You rival the great Mr. Sholmes? That's incredible. Oh, um, well, I don't know about that. Mr. Sholmes isn't a professional like myself, of course, but he does come up with the goods from time to time. Gregson is the pick of a bad lot of all the Scotland Yarders. Those are his own words. That he is not, and thanks to that magazine, my name's known all over London town now. That's great, isn't it? Hmm. I have to admit that to start when with, I was a little, well, flattered by all the attention. Everyone wanted to shake my hand, and my reputation at the yard went through the roof. That's wonderful. No, it is not! There's nothing more sinister than the man on the street. People are always looking at me now. They're whispering rumors about me under their breath, I'm sure. Are you quite sure? He's changed since he started appearing in those stories. The fame's gone to his head. Stuff like that. Gosh, do you really think people are saying such mean-spirited things about you? 
Uh, Blankman, thank you for the $5. Celeste, thank you for the $3. Chuck, you think of the thousand bits? Just trying to help. As sure as eggs is eggs. We've caught up to the grain lane, get these. There's nothing you can do. There's no way to help the bloke now. Why not? Simple. The prosecutor that's been assigned to the trial tomorrow is Lord Barrack Van Zee. Sounds like you've heard of him. Oh, yes. <clears throat> you know, I actually just beat him. I think that means that it's not impossible to save the defendant. No, you really don't have a clue, do you? What do you mean? What happened to that bloke in the end, eh? He's dead. Magnus McGilded came out a cropper in that omnibus when it went up in flames. So you can't rightly say you saved the defendant, now can you? Candy Druglorg, thank you for the 10 gifted subs! Look, if Van Zeese could get the dirt to stick on everyone, he'd be a miracle worker. That's not how it goes. He doesn't work miracles, he works magic. Black magic. Right, well, I filled you in as requested, and I'm very nearly out of chips. I'll be heading back to the crime scene now. We're still carrying out a few investigations there. Briar Road. It's correct, and if you head over to the holding cell, you can talk to the criminal himself. Shaking like a leaf in his cell, he is. I'll give you a chuckle if nothing else. He's inmate 53. No, we got it. We got it. We got to run back. Oh. Suzado is a Westavu.
There's a snowman. Here, this patch of payment is where the incident occurred. Hmm. Oi! What are you foreigners doing here? Uh-oh. Uh, we, uh, just investigating the scene. Conspiring with that mustache fella from Japan, are you? Conspiring? Come here to destroy evidence, have ya? Get out of here before I give you an island. Go on. Okay, goodbye. What a disappointing experience. The British? Racist? No, it couldn't be. That's a rather typical old brick building. I'm sure it has a long and interesting history. Ugh. Looks like shit. British bicycle. Uh, that's interesting. Huh. <laughs> Look at the windows of that building there. They're boarded up. Hmm. Oh, someone lives there. Capital. Hazy out. There's a spire being built. Crystal Tower. Right, 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 right. I'm passing a kidney stone. Fifth Raid's Duelist. Zara, I hope you had a good stream. We are just about done. As you can see... 727 left means we will not be making it to tomorrow morning. So come and join the end of the subathon. Hey. Hi. All right, well, while these bobbies are here, I feel that we won't be able to get much done. So let's go meet our assigned defendant. This looks like shit, dude. Yeah, it's a dungeon. I'm passing a kidney stone. Neshi, thanks for the raid as well. Wow, two people here for the end of the subathon. Inmate 53, your legal representative is here to see ya. Stop hiding at the back of the cell and show your face at once. Am I... Am I a cat? As yet with no name? Calling me by a number. It's utterly, unbelievably, unjustly unreasonable. I refuse to answer. Um. Oh! It's a Japanese guy. Quiet! They're all around. Hiding. I know they are. They're watching. Listening. Even now. I can sense it! Um... Uh. A ghost?
This is... Beyond my wildest dreams! Forgive me for that outburst before, I'm so sorry. It's fine, we were just a little surprised. Imagine it! It's been 12 long months since I left my hometown and here I am in a frightful fix in a foreign land! So hearing the sweet, sentimental tones of a compatriot's voice here in this damp, dark hellhole was a... Oh. Okay. Ah. Uh, what compassion my fellow countrymen show to dispatch a first-class lawyer all the way from Japan to defend a mere foreign student! Okay. Yeah, um... Oh boy. Would you be so kind as to tell us what's happened? Why you've been detained as a suspect, for example? Yes, yes. I can, I will! Okay. Natsume. So Seki Natsume. Boy, he is really something, huh? This is a real person? What an unusual name. I'm a poet, you see. A writer of haiku. It's something of a nom de plume. From 1984 until 2004, his portrait appeared on the front of the Japanese 1,000 yen note. A quote from the real wiki page, The two years I spent in London were the most unpleasant in my life. Among English gentlemen, I lived in misery, like a poor dog that had strayed among a pack of wolves. Um... This guy rocks. You must be a man of great standing. Oh yes, so I'm often told. Could you perhaps tell us exactly why you've been arrested, Soseki-san? I didn't do it! I didn't commit that atrocious murder! Oh, no, no, it's alright. The woman didn't actually die, should, did she? But she was stabbed with a knife right before my eyes! Before your eyes, you saw the attacker? Uh, I didn't see anyone. The Curse of London! So they just put this guy in the game for some reason? It was an accursed evening, just after the snow had started to clear and heavy with fog. I'd been to the bookshop to buy some books and I was on my way back to my accursed lodgings. <laughs> I was walking along that accursed pavement. Woman wearing a green overcoat, just as I went to overtake her. She let out a little scream and collapsed onto the cold hard slabs of stone at my feet. called out to the woman, but she didn't move. It was like a... I was terrified. I had to get away from there. So I ran as fast as my legs would carry me back to my accursed lodgings. That's not good. 
They'll say it was shameful, I know, to run away like that. Don't be ridiculous. Do you think I know any of these fair-haired English and a young woman at that? I'm diffident, shy, timid, unsure. I can't talk to people. Dies. Inferno Bacon just here to give my sub and leave. Chat, I want you to write that down. Inferno Bacon just here to give my sub and leave. Optimal chatter experience. Optimal chatter experience. Hello, sir. Have some money. Goodbye. discover he was there. Oh, yes. Oh. F fucking hell. There's no way that this guy has been accused by the one and only Dick Fuck Holmes. Hairlock Sholmes. I knew it. Well, now I know he's innocent. I like that they were told they couldn't call him Sherlock Holmes. They called him Hairlock Sholmes. And uh, they were like, let's just make this a bit. It was the morning after that nightmare had unfolded on the pavement before me. I was gnawing on a sliver of hard cheese when some men suddenly burst in through the door. They started shouting at me. This is the police. Put the weapon down. Yes, it was a thin sliver. And yes, it was hard, but I wasn't eating a weapon. Disgusting dietary discrimination. Devils! He had a clut trying moment. And there he was in the middle of all the policemen, grinning like a Cheshire cat. The hair Lock Sholmes. It's actually just her Lock Sholmes. He's English. Since found out, he's a famous name in detection here in London. Yes, the great detective is really very well known. And his overly sharp mind managed to deduce my whereabouts. Apparently. He thinks I'm the knife-wielding madman. Me, this weak, stooped kitten of a man. This country is poisoning my mind! Yeah, of course. A student? I've defended a case in the Old Bailey. Only the one, though. But at this moment in time, I really don't know what I'm supposed to believe in. I'm confused about what justice in this country even means. not even the foreign student who was supposed to be here. I'm a sort of locum lawyer, I suppose. But, but, but that armband! 
Aww. A keepsake! I know exactly what they're saying about me. Lawyers. All the British defense lawyers. They won't defend me. For the same reason as you noted before, when it happened, there was only the victim and myself around and I ran away from the scene of the crime. I'm not a fool. I know it looks as though I must be the culprit. It must be very hard for you, Soseki-san. Anyway, I'm a student from overseas. I'm just a foreign nobody to them. Someone not to be trusted. I heard them openly laughing about me before in my earshot without any compunction at all. Of course the foreigner did it. They even had the gall to say that man doesn't understand half of what's being said anyway. They're wrong! I've studied more English than half the policemen out there on the streets! But no one wants to listen to a man with a strange accent. They all hate me. So at the very least, I'd like to entrust my fate to someone who can listen to me in my native tongue. Oh. Give me a little time, please. I'll do what I can for the time being. This isn't on the door's trail, as I'm fairly, I'm fairly well sure you're well aware. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're here to investigate. So, you've been to the holding cells, then? What do you make of the criminal? He's a suspect. We'll see about that. You Japanese like to stick together, I suppose. Well, do what you will. Doesn't bother me. Blokes in court tomorrow, whatever happens. And the verdict's a foregone conclusion. London Bobby is hard going, I can tell you. Divac Crow thing of the sub. Oh, really? First thing in the morning, you know what he does. He goes around and rouses all the laborers on his beat so they can get off to work. Wraps on their windows with a long pole. Did myself going back a bit. Bobby works for the people of the town. It's just another one of his duties. After that, he starts tirelessly patrolling the streets all day long. He has to cover 20 miles a day. That's the regulation distance. And when it gets dark, of course, he has the all-important job of lighting all the gas street lamps.
we'll see about that. Twitchy Japanese bloke goes on trial tomorrow. Are you going to defend him or not? Um. No London lawyer with his salt would touch that case with a barge pole. Prosecution is being. Yeah, it's, it's, it's. Yeah, I don't know why he came back either. Yeah, this is strange. There's got to be more to it. Sheesh. Right, let's talk to Mr. Sholmes. Who did you hear that name from? Oh, uh, Mr. Natsume. He said Mr. Sholmes was with the police when they entered his lodgings. Fiddle the man's an amateur, and I'm getting sick and tired of him showing his mug everywhere. I don't know where he gets his information from, but he turns up at the scene of the crime, wanders around spouting incomprehensible rubbish, and before you know it, he claims to have solved the case. Yes, he's astounding, isn't he? Gibble gabble. Ever seen this before? Yes, well, that wonderful publication, as you put it, sees fit to include several of the Yard's detectives in its stories. And this so-called great detective makes a mockery of all of us. If you ask anyone at the Yard, it's a misadventure to be included in any Erlach Sholmes tale at all. Okay. We ought to let you off. Oh, God. Oh, if he fucking testifies. Oh good, he puts his fucking address in the- okay, sure. God, he makes me want fish and chips so bad. I know, I've been thinking about it the whole time. Oh good, there's an animation. Thank you very much. It's just up there overlooking the street. Good day. Thanks again. This is it. The residence of Mr. Herlock Scholes. Sponsored by Subway, thank you for the prime.
This is the stupidest place I've ever seen in my entire life. Ooh, that looked good. <laughs> Kavili, thank you for the prime. What a freak. Okay. Aren't you? Sorry, gotta text my wife. Oh, yes, it was challenging. Well, try this tea. It's my special blend, you know. Oh, thank you. Oh my, what a fragrant yet mellow flavor. Hooray, it's a winner! Okay. Did Mr. Sholmes tell you about us by any chance? Oh, you know Hurley, do you? Hurley! Mr. Sholmes was a fellow passenger on a boat that brought us to Great Britain, you see. Was he really? Well, I had no idea. I'm afraid Hurley's out on an errand again today, even though he's just returned from overseas. In a minute. How does she know so much about us? Did she deduce all those things? Why is she here? Oh, silly me, I haven't introduced myself. Iris Wilson. Okay. This can't be. Your name is Wilson? Yes, that's right. And what are your names? Oh, uh, I'm Rinosuke Naruhodo. Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm Mr. Naruhodo's judicial assistant. It's wonderful to meet you. Lovely. Susie and Bruno. Right, let's talk to her, I guess. That's right, you were ever so helpful. Thank you so much. No, oh, not at all. I'm sorry we couldn't have been more welcoming. But at the time, we did have a rather large gun pointed at us. That's the one. Daughter? Not likely. They're brothers? Sister? Oh. They were roommates. I'm ten years old. Ah. Uh, Huh? 
I'm a very great fan of the adventures of Herlock Sholmes and- Oh, you have a copy of Ranst! Yes, I read every issue! Oh, this is so exciting. My stories are being read on the- Oh my god, she writes them. Oh, the speckled band! Hensky, thank you for the five. Oh. They're fake. The stories I've ever read are written by a doctor of medicine, Dr. John Wilson. Mm, that's me. <laughs> uh, my name really is Wilson. What about the doctor of medicine? Uh, that's also true. I am a doctor of medicine. At 10? At 10 years old. Oh, that's incredible. But, 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 but Dr. Wilson is an English gentleman. Ah, yes. I did alter the settings slightly for the stories to be more compelling. Well, sounds a little strange, doesn't it? A great detective with a 10-year-old girl in tow. I suppose it does. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, about before. How did you know that I was a lawyer and we just arrived in London? Oh my god. <laughs> but you also said we've only just arrived in London. How'd you know that? A passport in your breast pocket. Oh, she's, like, actually really good at this. <laughs> Mr. Natsume. Aruno has that fancy Japanese sword. I think your outfit is a kimono, isn't it, Susie? Anyway, it was clear to me you both came from Japan yourself, so I put two and two together and decided you must defend the Japanese man Hurley caught. Yeah, uh, that's a hundred percent correct. That was, like, perfect. We don't have to correct it? They were spot on! That was amazing! I didn't know you could do that! Oh my god. This is really very good news. You could tell us about the case involving the Japanese man, wouldn't you? Because mm. we don't know shit about it. So yesterday, Mr. Sholmes apprehended a Japanese man, as you were saying. Hurley had just arrived back in London after his sea voyage, but the police were waiting for him at the uh, railway station to take him to the crime scene. The great detective is a popular man, it seems. A woman was stabbed on a quiet street somewhere in town. There were witnesses who had seen a short, shifty-looking, stooped man running away from the scene. Yeah, that's him.
Oh. Oh. Well, we're fucked. God, we have to talk to fucking Herlock as well. Now I want some tea. Oh, is this a break? It is. What the fuck? Uh, all right. I'm gonna make some tea. I really do fucking want some tea now. God damn it. I'm gonna make some tea, I'm gonna get a little cake. I'm gonna get some tea and some cakes. I'm gonna make some tea and cakes and then I'll be back and then we will do the rest of this. Yeah, no, I gotta tell you. Oh. This, um, this, this game is doing a fucking bang up job of making the investigation not the most painful shit in the universe. Oh, all right. Looks as though the police are still here, carrying on with their investigation. <laughs> he likes it. Oh, he likes it. Soros code, thank you for the 10. I don't know if I missed that. I think I didn't. Oh, no. Oh, that's where he lives? Oh! Interesting. He really likes that little girl. Well, let's check it out. What the fuck? Wait, it's the it's the cannon from Garden of Ban Ban. Uh 
<laughs> What's up with her? Garadeb? Who the fuck is Mr. Garadeb? That was a real life English maid. I know. I never understood the concept of maids. Am I too poor for this? I just don't get it. How? How? What? What? They just. They just spend all day cleaning? I don't get it. They're cute. You're not employing them to be cute. They clean your house for you. That's it. It's all about how big a house you have. Oh. When I moved into uh, this house, I, I was shocked to see how much work it was to keep the fucking thing clean. And I was like, I don't know how we would have, because we could have gotten a larger house than we have, but it didn't make sense financially and because there's only a couple of us, you know, me and Jillian and Sadie. Who's down there now, I believe? Sadie, where'd you end up? Anyway, Jillian was like, that's why you get a maid. I was like, what? She was like, yeah, if you have a big house, you'd like get a maid to come in every so often. And I was like, nah, I ain't doing that shit. I don't want anyone else to have to clean up my messes. Sadie. But if you have a big house, it seems like it would be a necessity. <laughs> have you ever seen for- oh my god. Who is this? John Garadib. This man is the moon. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. We forged an alliance with the Empire of Japan recently, as I'm sure you're aware, so this case is very much the public eye, as it were. Great. Herlock Sholmes. Could have been. Didn't catch the chap's name. Not really my cup of tea. Cute. Yeah? Uh, no. It's a bowling nuisance. Chucky1833, thank you for the thousand. She is the best maid I've ever seen. Ah, yes, the Japanese chap. Only been lodging here for a week. Oh, just a week? So we moved in very recently, then. I have two lodgers most of the time, one on the ground floor and one just below us. First floor room we can- Ah! If you want to know my opinion... I thought he was a shady sort from the moment I set eyes on him. Oh, why? He seemed to have a most nervous disposition. The man had shady written across his sweat-soaked brow. I said to myself, Joan, that man is trouble. Sooner or later, he's going to do something untoward. And I'm rarely wrong about anything. Okay. 
Okay, that's not helpful. Take the man's room. Absolutely stuffed full of books, more than anyone could ever read. Huh. Wow. How do you know so much about him? Oh! Good grief, Joan! Oh my god, what happened over here? Oh, come on! For the love of God, Joan, watch what you're doing! Hmm... Jesus... Joan, dash it all! Fucking freak. It's to shoot Jumbo Josh if he appears in the window, exactly. So this guy, uh, just pre oh, that old thing for distinguished participation. He has a fucking participation trophy. That's incredible. This guy rocks. <laughs> Those old things, couple little rounds I accidentally fired at the barracks during training. Hmm. 
Eek. Gross Hunter, thank you for the sub. Wow, he has just got a lot of shit in this house. Ahem. <laughs> Something's up with this maid. It's destroyed. And this lazy Susan. Also destroyed. Is such a fucking freak. I don't like him. Well, unfortunately, that's it. All right. Well, we can go. God, where does he sleep? Kind of a grim place, isn't it? Where is Sholmes? Oh, I thought he would be hanging booty ass on one of these... Little knickknacks. Okay, sure. Okay, well, Daruma doll is different. Big stretch, huh? Oh, okay. We'll take that. Thank you. Jeez, he is a... Uh... Oh, son of a bitch.
Ah, you two. Good day. I was tricked. Now let me see. Where was it that we met? We were on the SS Burya. And let me see. What happened on that voyage? Uh, Kazuma Azogi died tragically. Well, the snake was part of it, yes. <laughs> oh. Close. There's no need to quote yourself. I don't always remember my pearls of wisdom, but fortunately, my associate pens them beautifully. Iris. Mr. Sholmes, we have some extremely important questions to ask you about the trivial case you just mentioned. Goodness, what an earnest expression. My dear madam, I should be only too pleased, and this murky room is an apt place to discuss the murky case. Finally, a person is going to fucking talk to us about the case. Oh my god, this guy has revitalized me. We know this to be the lodgings of a Japanese foreign student by the name of Soseki Natsume. The stabbing of a young woman out here on Briar Road. Natsume. Uh, was it really justifiable? I'm sorry, Miss Suzato. Oh? Interesting. Hmm. So it kind of wasn't his fault. Thanks, Sholmes. He fucking is weird. <laughs> that was a good one. I didn't think it was that funny. I do apologize. As you may be well be aware, many households in London employ a maid. Yes, I read as much. And so conversely, whether or not a household employs a maid has to come between uh, has come to betoken the social standing of those employed therein. <laughs> those who employ a single maid are considered middle class. Those who do not are beneath that. In the upper echelons of society, households employ enough staff to constitute a large family. as he is, the fellow is hiding something. Clown maids. This room is thoroughly suffocating for the soul, my dear fellow. I assure you, any man whose lot is to dwell in a place like this will stab somebody sooner or later. That's probably true. It's a goon cave. Look at all the tissues. Goodness. Until relatively recently, a tax was levied on households in this country by the number of their windows. So of lesser means, having inherited a sizable and costly family home, perhaps rapidly closed windows up. Interesting. Hmm. 
What an awful world we live in. Okay, well, maybe we'll get a, a room here. No, no, please. Tell me. Oh? Thank you, Mr. Sholmes. Is it not your intention to become a practitioner of law? Uh, yes. Uh, oof. In fact, I would. Not sure on what grounds. I actually defended someone in court here only yesterday. Really? I congratulate you on an ambition realized, and so promptly, too. The thing is, it's really made me question things. Am I right to believe in my clients, to trust in their innocence? Trust. Yes, we know this. We got a Rin, thank you for the gifty. Rin says 280 subs, we make it to tomorrow. That is correct. Ah, uh, you pair again. Yeah, he was down there. 279. <laughs> Thanks, Rin. Anonymous, thank you for the gifty. Wandering Hero 267, thank you for the gifty. Oh my god. Blankman, thank you for the gifty. Saurus code, thank you for the gifty. What an asshole. Oh my god. Mr. Sholmes. Good gracious, when did you sneak in here? Oh no. Are we gonna have gay sex in front of these two? Oh. Oh my god. The Chat! You know what time it is! Say! Gex! these well maybe <laughs> how did he know how could I know you mean to inquire the answer couldn't be simpler sir for in the dense jungle of logic and reasoning where does he end up like this
Yes. Gex. It certainly shouldn't take a great detective to see that a fearsome beast has been on the rampage of late within these four walls. Thus, we are faced with the question, what form might this beast take? Ah, for a man with military breeding, your eyes are uncommonly candid. Your furtive glance, Mr. Garadeb, leads us directly to the answer. All right, chat, let's play a little game here. Maybe we can perhaps extend the subathon. Each time this is gay, gift a sub. <laughs> Uh, I don't like that one. What is this piffle, I ask you? In the end, your admiration became so great, in fact, that you had a living, breathing specimen shift from India, which you tried to keep in this very house. KGG1, thank you for the 20 subs. What? Yeah, living with such a wild beast proved more difficult than you would imagine. Ooh. Oh? Oh. Okay, this is a little insane. I most certainly did not! No. We're at 6 a.m. We're getting to Tuesday. 6 a.m. is at 9.30 a.m. We ain't there yet. Calm, chat. No, Mr. Gardy. Pit Dweller, thank you for the hundred. Gex! Chat. Say Gex. Indeed, in that blithe pose, the distress this lost has caused you is veritably tangible. Your head weighs heavy on your shoulders. The pain you feel with the supporting arm. Do donos add to the timer? They do. 250 per minute. The strain of losing something so dear to you is visible in your visage. Nonsense, man. I simply... What is the true cause of this pain? Okay. And we need only follow the direction of your gaze to find the answer. Yes, this pile of bills has given rise to the pain you suffer. Every envelope contains another demand of payment. Ah. For carloads of meat, potatoes, wheat, and tea. Oh, we are actually just under... Uh, 500 subs to unlock the remainder of our emote slots forever. That's epic. Ugh. Indeed, feeding your beloved has had a devastating impact on the financial circumstances of your household. And so you had no choice but to let it go. What's the exact amount? We are 400 and... 36 away. Oh, okay. Blasters, thank you for the 10. We love casting spells. Ooh. God, this mate is so fucking hot. I don't know what it is. She is so hot. Why is everyone saying, huh? You all know I'm right. <laughs> uh, 
This guy's an idiot. Chad, if you think he's right, give two subs. Oh, it's the moon and the sun! Okay. Brett the Gamer, thank you for the 20. What's the matter with you, Joan? You're pouring hot scalding tea all over me. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Garadib. I'm afraid I didn't notice. My deductions can be startlingly sharp. It stands to reason that your cup runneth over. Uh, they're wrong, though. Soros Code, thank you for the 20 gifties! Beep, 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 beep. Uh, Mr. Sholmes, you're wrong. Your deductions... Do you really think a lion could have fit inside a room of this size? Kabuki Machias, thank you for the two gifties, because I'm correct. Terrifying truth lies all too often beyond the realms of common sense. Wouldn't it be right to consider what lies within the realms of common sense? Forty-one subs away from League with Danny. That's true. <laughs> no, it's not. All right, time to go. Let's give him a slight massage. Excellent. I've been waiting for my trusty partner in deduction to step forward. Mr. Naruhodo. Gay time. Four play over. It's time for Gex. Course correction. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. A rampaging autistic lion. Wait, shit. <laughs> Asiatic lion. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right. Oh, fucking hell. N54 lion heart. Thank you for the hundo. And we have officially made it to tomorrow. Ah, boy. Okay. It's like 20 seconds tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Danny's gonna love playing League, I know it. Thus we are faced with the question- holy shit! We have hit a level 14 hype train! Do these just- do these just go forever? Juni- uh, Junsi, I apologize, it's- we are- it's- it's been a night. Okay. For a man with a military breeding, your eyes are uncommonly candid. It's a lion. Hold up. Could be the mortar shells? Oh, did a, did a fucking mortar round go off? Oh. Hello. Snow Prism, thank you for the five. Oh. Oh. Ho -ho. Chucky, thank you for the thousand bits. Take that.
We didn't think of the ten. Wait, did we get fucked up in the gay sex part? Wow. Not even gay sex is safe these days. Well, that's one of the only two things it could be, so fuck it. Take that! What the fuck? I cannot look down, no. What the fuck? There's nothing else to look at. Fuck off, you stinking a- Oh my, what a stupid fucking game. The true nature of the beast that has run rampant here is revealed by the newlywed bride. Precisely, Mr. Narahodo, no other explanation could possibly fit. Yes, this frame prints pictures of your wife, Mr. Garadab. And while we lament the fact that her face is obscured, we can still make out her mighty arms and note the considerable horsepower they must contain. Oh, um... Indeed, surely a woman of a powerful constitution would be honored to be described as a beast. Uh, honored might be a stretching point. Too late! The chilling traces of a wild rampage are still very much in evidence. He actually has a, a slap on his face, you can see. If you look around, the beast in question fails to present itself. Where could the same creature have disappeared to? Oh! Me? I 
don't know about fragile. I actually know where it is. It's her fucking hand. She's, she's holding her hands very well. Your enormous ass. Alright, good, we're back. Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, while we were waiting, we got fucked a little bit. Oh, there it is. Take that! Take that! For it is identical to the one shown on the hand of Mr. Garadab's bride in this photographic print. In other words, you are no ordinary household maid. No. You are Mr. Garadab's lucky bride. You are Mrs. Garadab herself. Oh my word! Well, jolly fine detecting, sir. As you rightly surmise, this is the wife, yes, my Joan. Rather let herself go. <laughs> yeah, this is strange. Only in company, obviously. But listen here, this must remain a secret. Tip top secret, please! Okay, next. That's true. Oh. Oh, I think I have this one right here. Your head weighs heavy on your shoulders. The pain you feel being revealed by that slapped cheek. And of course, the deliver liver of that impressive mark on your cheek that refuses to fade. Was you, Madame Joan Gardeeb? Well, yes. You've been desperate to hide the slap mark on your cheek, sir. How in the blazes did you work that out, man? <laughs> That's why you haven't looked directly at us even once, to keep your other side from view. Now, let us proceed to the next conundrum. Why were you subjected to such a violent slap? 
In other words, we must ask ourselves what caused such a rage. And we need only follow the direction of your gaze to find the answer. Not the bills. Well, let's check what the book says. Oh! He's having gay sex with a woman! Oh, James, I love you. Yours, Mary. Passionate indeed. Perhaps the sender of this note, a certain Miss Mary, is the fly in the ointment here. Ah! But I don't know the Bali woman! You don't know her? That note wasn't written to me. It was just in the book. I don't know how it got there. Just in there, you said. That's right, that's what I'm- Ah! This guy. A likely story. Now listen here, Joan, old thing. I explained at the time. I bought the book at the second-hand place, and the note must have already been in there. Joan, burn his nuts off. And to James, my name, in case you've forgotten, is John! Ah! A likely story. Uh, and there we have it. Ah, <laughs> uh, the candle. Yes, to explain the dire state of the carpet, we need only look at the candlestick. Most illuminating, my dear fellow, and of course, the only possible way out of this logical labyrinth. Labyrinth! Yu-Gi-Oh! The remnants of a ferocious attack in which this carpet was devoured are clearly visible. Indeed, the scorch marks at the edge clearly give the truth away. After the sparks of marital discord flew, this room was the scene of a fire. dead oh my god wow this game really shows the power of gay sex over straight sex god i love the jiggle she is just god, she's nice
Interesting. As expected, a small fire. <laughs> the lion's pride. Interesting. Mr. Sholmes. Well, I think we've gotten to the bottom of the situation now, but what does it have to do with Mr. Natsume's circumstance? I can't help you there. My dear fellow, if you recall, I did say as much from the start. No, it's relevant. I think it's very relevant. I wanted to... Oh. Who... The fuck is this? What? Yeah? Oh my god. This is the most annoying thing that I've ever seen. This is the other person who lives there. It's his gay lover. But what do you think the Amazonist call sounds like? Probably something like... Ah! Connor Prohaska, think of the 10. I appreciate it. Jesus Christ. I mean, really... I had hoped to go there and investigate just a little bit while the police were gone, and instead I met two uh, insane people. I can't believe you came back! I'm so touched! We have met zero non-freaks today. <laughs> if I were a cat. Okay, let's not get carried away. Oh. God damn it, dog. The miserable rotten spy, Herr Locksholmes.
Okay. I <laughs> read all your books while you were gone. Interesting. Okay, well, we know this one. The Reaper of the Bailey. Uh, yeah, you're going to die. Oh, God, he doesn't know. He doesn't know, chat! No defendant has ever survived a trial in which the Reaper stands for the prosecution ever. That was 16. Oh my goodness. Can it really be true? That was 16 words exactly. Oh my. We shouldn't have told him this. He's gonna get freaked out. No, the, that's the thing is, he doesn't have a perfect prosecutorial record. Every time he loses, uh, he becomes, or the person fucking dies. Prosecutor. I don't know. Interesting. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. You're you're fucked. cursed. Oops! Interesting. Huh. 
I can believe in you. Yes, sure. Little racist, but yes. Oh. This guy rocks so much. <laughs> he is so fucking smart. The only things I believe in. Are those I believe in? God, he's he's so smart. If <laughs> he's so smart. Yeah, these two were there too for some unthinkable reason. Okay, so, we finished the investigation yesterday. Good morning. Ah, uh, Mr. Natsume, good morning. Oh dear, are you alright? You your eyes look terribly bloodshot. The early bird catches the worm, so they say. Here in Britain. Yes, I've heard it. But I don't really want to catch a worm. So I tried desperately not to wake up early, but I was so worried I couldn't catch a wink. And now I'm absolutely exhausted. Okay. Oh no. 
Okay, why is he so notorious? Um, oh, what did he do? It's because of the Reaper, isn't it? Oh, really? People are here? Lord Van Zeeks is on the front page of everyone. I knew it. I wish you could figure out why. Chat, has Asogi and Ryunosuke sucked each other off yet? Um... Nice master rule category. Um, mods, um, you, you're in the wrong category. Excuse me, excuse me, streamer. Can you fleet, please? Did you really change it to Among Us? People, you're famous because you beat him. <laughs> Let's not forget that it was you, Mr. Natsume, who asked me to represent you. I promise you this. I will fight your corner until the bitter end, and I will believe in you, Mr. Natsume. Oh, benevolent locum student, Mr. Naruhodo Esquire! You're not alone here with us, Mr. Natsume. Whatever happens, we will always be on your side. Oh, benevolent lit non-locum assistant, Miss Mikitoba Esquiris. I am in your debt forever. I shall never forget this great kindness as long as I live. All right, let's go. All right, it's time. New people. Oh, son of a bitch. The prosecution is fully prepared, my lord. The defense is ready, my lord. The Nipponese are a truly fascinating breed. Oh, God. Sorry, what? <laughs> lord Strongheart has told me all about you. You are a student who arrived in London but two days ago. A mere amateur. Do you have a point? Being a compatriot, you felt compelled to try to help the accused, I suppose. Typical Nipponese arrogance. You have never met a Japanese person in your life. Very true. And the most fascinating, if dark, trial it was too. The tragic conclusion came later, of course. Uh... different guy uh uh, uh hold up can we get a different uh hello uh excuse me uh can we do we not get to to vet this jury well they don't know that guy Very recently, Great Britain signed an alliance with a rising power in the Far East. 
That's right, China. The accused in the dock today is a student from that same land, a certain Mr. Soseki Natsume. And while our country has extended this foreign student the warmest of welcomes, regrettably the kindness has not been returned. In fact, this student is accused of a most sinister act. This is a little loud. Let me turn it down just a little bit. There we go. Of plunging a knife into the back of an innocent woman who is doing nothing but walking down the street. A knife crime? I tell you from bitter experience, those are the worst! Bloody oath they are! Just look at that sallow complexion and short- Oh no. This one's racist. Alright, we'll, we'll split the difference, chat. Come on, let's get this over with. With me, everyone. One, two, three. Eh? Pray. Forgive the discourtesy of smashing. How many hallowed chalices does this guy have? I'm passing a kidney stone. Oh! Gregson! Your name and occupation, please. Du Bois Gregson, Detective Inspector at Scotland Yard. Would you please summarize the events of the case for the court, Inspector? The victim is thought to be a young woman in her twenties by the name of Olive Green, stupid fucking name. I beg your pardon, Inspector. Thought to be? Yes, having been stabbed in the back by a attacker's knife, the victim fell unconscious. That was three days ago now. Oh, she's in a coma. Hmm, comatose, I see. But her life is not in danger. Fortunately for the Eastern student, the charge will not be murder. Pray elaborate on the details, Inspector. Is this the first non-murder charge we're doing? Alright, let's go. I think there was one that was supposed to be non-murder and then became murder in a previous one. Yeah, in Ace Attorney 3, yeah. Ah, uh, yes, the mask to mask one, the one we got the man on Double Jeopardy for, was robbery. That was such a good case. It had everything. A breedable twink. A dommy mommy. Luke at me was the greatest character ever conceived. A banger. What of the weapon that was used? Hmm. Look it out. Hmm. Tip's a little fucked up, isn't it? tell by looking at the woman's possessions, it seems like she's forced in herself. I do imagine she would have had anything much worth pinching, my lord. I see. Well, in that case, are we looking at some deep-seated resentment towards the victim? I'm afraid I couldn't say. Apart from visiting second-hand bookshops, the defendant, Mr. Natsume, don't appear to get out much. At this moment in time, we haven't been able to establish any sort of connection between him and the victim. Yes! 
So we have no motive. Objection! Objection! I love it. Pray forgive the discourtesy of flinging an uncorked bottle into the public gallery. But your words have soured its hallowed bouquet. For it is you, my learned friend, who is being heavy-handed here. What? Scotland Yard does not arrest people without good cause. That should be beyond question. Inspector Gregson, the prosecution calls for your formal testimony. Explain to the court precisely why the constabulary came to arrest the young Nipponese student. Yes, sir. As I said, it was five o'clock in the afternoon when the incident occurred. There was an unusually light fog. Visibility was reasonably good, and there was no one else about but the victim and the accused. Out of the blue, the victim was stabbed from behind and subsequently collapsed on the pavement. The accused ran off, scattering his belongings all over the floor. Those being a number of old books he'd just bought. He was on his way home from a bookshop, it seems. Just a matter of working out who the books belonged to, and we found the bloke to arrest him. Bunnies are a spineless breed, too cowardly to admit defeat. Denying everything, despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. Well, I... The defendant is not denying everything. Mr. Natsume has admitted to playing some part in the incident. Isn't that right, Mr. Naruhoto? Well, yes. This explains the books. Hmm, a green overcoat. Well, that's exactly what the woman in that print is wearing. The defendant has done nothing more than admit he fled the scene of a terrifying incident. That does not mean he's guilty of the heinous crime of stabbing the woman in the back. There was nobody else there at the time, just the two of them, the victim and the accused. In other words, there is nobody else who could possibly have stabbed the woman. A fact that the accused concedes. Hmm. How quaint. Yes, well, it's not something us Londoners tend to romanticize, as I romanticize, as I can expect you can appreciate. I see. This time of year, the fog causes a large number of accidents, especially when it's heavy. Sometimes you can't even see your own hand at the end of your arm. Hmm. How are you able to state that with any certainty? Quite simply, my learned friend, because that is what the witness to the crime have told us. Bring him in. Here. The prosecution will, of course, call them to the stand, should it be necessary. Wait a minute. Five o'clock in the afternoon in the middle of winter, it would have been dark already. No matter how light the fog might have been, no one could have seen... I'm unaware of the situation on your tiny island in the east. 
But here in the capital city of Great Britain, all main roads are illuminated in the night by gas streetlights. We'll have to remember that it was the job of the policemen to light those. Hardly. God, he is being racist. Uh, maybe. Hold it! Mr. Natsume's belongings, um... I think you'll find it's all there in the photographic print of the crime scene. I commend the accused on the lofty subject matter of his scholarly attention. The bloke's room was stacked floor to ceiling with those musty old books. Can you tell us more about the bookshop in question, please? Ah, uh, well, if I must. I'm afraid you'll have to look at the street map again. Bourbon books. Interesting. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's let's take a look. This is Bourbon Books. This is where he lives, and that's where the stabbing occurred. Oh, we actually have an immediate problem. Hold it! May I ask you a favor? What? Would you kindly add the name of the bookshop to your formal testimony, please? I believe it may be of vital importance. Maybe? Oh, well, you know. I mean, yes, it could be a very important clue. Was he now? Because I happen to have a receipt here from a different one. Objection! Objection! What is it, sunshine? I'm a busy man, you know. 
This is a receipt that we found in Mr. Natsume's room. Gray Lane, thank you for the 10 gifties! This receipt is issued from a bookshop called Your Books. Yes, my lord. So Mr. Natsume did indeed purchase a number of books from a secondhand bookshop that day. However, the bookshop in question was not bourbon books. Eh? What? Inspector, do you know of this other bookshop? Uh, yes, sir. Your Books is another secondhand bookshop not far from bourbon. Uh, it's just that... Well, it's such a small place, I, I didn't think the accused would have known about it. Attention. Oh, please. Don't insult my friend's intelligence. Objection! Objection! Are you streaming right now? Yes? W I... You're watching it, right? For what difference it makes. Wherever the man purchased his musty tomes, it makes no difference in the final analysis. I disagree! Uh, I mean, uh, after all, um... Well, we don't know where your books is. My, my. That's it! All we need to do is stop time slow and he'll stream forever! Oh god. The power of my stand. Oh, interesting. So, theoretically, he could take the same route home, or he could have not. Where'd he get another one? My learned Nipponese friend is obviously in training to be a clown the way he regales us with such witticisms. To your future career in the circus. I, uh, didn't think I needed to spell it out, but here we go. The accused was coming home from your books instead of bourbon books. There's no doubt he would have passed the place where the victim was stabbed. What if he goes the other way? Please stop destroying your hallowed chalice. The assertion just made by the prosecution is fundamentally flawed. Explain yourself! Um, yes, my lord. You can see what I mean on this map. Could have followed the route suggested by the prosecution. However, that isn't the only conceivable route to take between the two places. Thank you! If the defendant used these streets, look what happens. He arrives back at his lodgings without passing the location Objection. the victim was attacked. But he's conceded he's met the victim. The long way round. Only by a little. Because he's a freak. must ask the man himself. Ask Mr. Natsume which route he took home. I have already informed the court of the accused response to such questioning. He claims he has no recollection. Son of a bitch. That's right. As I said, the bloke seems to spend his time outside wandering aimlessly from A to B. Well, then why do you think he would take the short route home?
Nope, hold up, jury. Uh oh. I agree with Lord Van Zeeks wholeheartedly and in every way. What? We members of the jury are completely convinced now. Oh, fucking Christ. Guilty! Guilty. 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 Jesus Christ, the British are bloodthirsty. All right. Run it back. <laughs> We're up. I'm up. I'm fucking up. I'm up. I'm up. I'm up. Hmm, those are the eyes of Cory, not yet willing to give up and die. We're, I'm gonna do the fucking thing. Call it antiquated if you will, but it's the defense's prerogative to carry out a summation examination if he chooses. Very well, counsel. Of course we're ready. I'm all too familiar with that Nipponese whippersnapper and his onkus refusal to throw in his alley. Then why is he a juror? Fuck. All right, here we go. No. Hold it! Aren't you? Yes, that's right. I was in the witness stand myself just two days ago. Yes, I had a feeling I knew your face, or the sight of it, anyway. You're a banker, aren't you? That's right. Sorry. Well, you know, water under the bridge. Right at the time of the incident, the defendant admits to have seen someone wearing a green overcoat walking ahead of him. Thank you for these 60 gifties. I do declare the man has already made the admission. Mm. 
These are tough. This is Mr. First. KGG1, thank you for the 20! Phoenix Lands 13, thank you for the 50! Holy shit. What, did they all show up at the same time? N54 Lionheart, thank you for the 20 gifters! Legitimately, what the fuck is happening? Oh my god. If we remain at this hour mark for another hour, we're f we're fucking making it till tomorrow. Oh my god. Wow. All right. Well, uh let me uh let me uh thank you all. See you tomorrow! Okay, Gray Lane, thank you for the 50. Uh, Ikkyu1, thank you for the 50. Uh, holy shit. I'm, I'm trying to scroll up. N54 Lionheart, thank you for the... fucking 100 that was an hour ago okay i'm scrolling up here we go this is it's been four minutes gray lane thank you for the 60 kgg1 thank you for the 20 phoenix lance 13 thank you for the 50 n54 lionheart thank you for the 20 gray lane thank you for the Second group of 50. Ikkyu1, thank you for the 50. Saurus Code, thank you for the 20. N54 Lionheart, thank you for the 50. Gray Lane, thank you for the additional 50 after the first 50. N54 Lionheart, thank you for the 50. Fucking hell, dog. Knight C322, thank you for the 5. Ikkyu1, thank you for the 50. And Ikiu1, thank you for the additional 50 just now. Just this last second. Just in the last 10 seconds. Uh, wow. Holy shit. We love casting spells. What the fuck? We were so close, chat. We were so fucking close. No, you weren't, says chat. I don't know. 
I don't know, man. Hmm. Seven more days. You're never leaving. I We're not doing seven more days. I said what? We call it on the fourth? That's six days from now. It's annoyingly true. Winter nights are dark and cold, so the way I see it, you'd want to get home as quickly as possible. So really, the only thing that makes sense is that he went home along Briar Road. I'm supposed to be convincing you here. I have given it a lot of thought, you know. I just didn't make my mind on a whim that he did it. I mean, if there was some logical reason he went to Cabbage Road, it'd be different. I'd be happy to reconsider my position in the, that case. But we can't present here. That's right. We're gonna find out that Grey Lane is like an oil billionaire, like an actual quadrillion. Grey Lane, uh, thank you for the. Grayling, thank you for the hundred gifties. N54 Lionheart, thank you for the hundred gifties. Grayling, thank you for the fifty gifties. Are they fighting for the fucking top spot? N54 Lionheart, thank you for the 50 gifties. Cray Lane, thank you for the 20 gifties. Okay. We're tightening the race here. Ugh. N54 Lionheart, thank you for the six gifties. Putting them one over Gray Lane. <laughs> Oh my god. Grayley, thank you for the two gifties! Putting you in first! Oh my god. N54 Lionheart, thank you for the fucking 50. Gray Lane, thank you for the fucking 50. We love casting spells. And more Lionheart, thank you for the 50 gifties. We love casting spells. Gray Lane, thank you for the 50 gifties. <laughs> What the fuck? N54 Lionheart, thank you for the 50 gifties. <laughs> this, I'm I've never seen anything like this. I'm legitimately shocked. Gray Lane, thank you for the 100 gifties. In the past 10 minutes, we have gained. 20 hour N54 Lionheart! Thank you for the 100 gifties! Dyer! <laughs> Thanks for the two. Gray Lane, thanks for the amount. It's 10, I believe. 13. 
Okay. Okay. I have to actually move where the number is. N54 Lionheart, thank you for the 33 gifties. Phoenix Lance, thank you for the three. I appreciate it. Oh, okay. Alright. <sighs> I bought you all a thousand minutes. I'm fine with second. Thank you. Coder has the record of 16501 if you want to break a chat. I have no interest in breaking the Coder record. Wow. <laughs> we just watched Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk battle it out in your dom donos. homework on stream how many do you need to unlock all subs uh, we are a, a 1600 subs over chat shit I might go to bed now you all have noticed, but this guy kind of looks like the woman who got hit.
Like, almost exactly. Well, this one's easy. We can pit this guy against this guy. Objection! Those two statements are clearly at odds with each other. At odds? Explain yourself! Don't point! It wasn't me! Eh? Well, you, juror number three... Juror number five's words now are extremely significant. Let's take a moment to consider the implication of what's been said on our map of the local area. On the day in question, Mr. Natsume visited this bookshop to, put in, to purchase a number of secondhand books. On the same day, we now know that there were works being carried out on near Scoum Street, making it impassable. Which means the defendants are at home, could not have taken him around to that one. Oh yes! Well, what do you think, sir? Well, yes, you can't argue with that. We must have had a good two yards or more of the pavement up. So the only conclusion is this. The defendant must have taken the longer route back to his lodgings. Yes, I suppose that he must have. I suppose that must be right, eh? Good. One down. Eh, who, me? Uh, well, all right then. If there's a hole in the prosecution's argument, it should be filled in. All right, two down. Now, I don't want to talk to the two people who fucking hate me. So I will pit the other two against each other. I think... I think we can do this. So it, it's a little, it's a little unintuitive. But it couldn't, it could have necessarily been someone else. The guy in the green coat right over there. Those two statements show a flaw in the juror's reasoning. A flaw? What are you talking about? Well, juror number two, juror number six. There's at least one fact of which we can be sure here. The bookshop receipt found on the defendant's room clearly indicates that on the day of the attack, he had been to your books and purchased a number of secondhand titles. He then returned home on foot. But the man says he has no recollection of the return journey. That's correct. What he does remember is seeing someone appear in front of him along the way, someone in a green overcoat who collapsed in the pavement before his eyes. Yes, we are all well aware of this. The poor young woman who was stabbed, obviously. Oh, can we be sure of that? What do you mean? I'm sure you heard juror number six's account of what happened to him that day. That same afternoon, there was someone apart from the victim who was wearing a green overcoat and fell over on the icy streets of the neighborhood. Oh? My goodness. Y you mean... I mean, he does kind of look exactly like her. Are you really suggesting the person in the green overcoat whom the defendant saw collapse in front of his eyes? Oh, I love her little angry shake. Was the jolly old gentleman at the end of the bench uh, with me here today? Could be. He looks pretty much exactly the same. My goodness me. Hmm? Sorry? You need to pee? And crucially, we know precisely where the old man in the green overcoat fell. On Calabash Road. Therefore, if the person who Mr. Natsume saw collapsing in front of him was in fact juror number six, it means the defendant took the wrong route back to his lodgings. And if that's true, he couldn't have killed her. You idiot old man! If you hadn't been so daft as to be roaming about there, we would have boxed this off hours ago. And really, what were you thinking wearing such a befuddling coat? What did you say to me? Is it a crime for the elderly to walk the streets these days? A crime to slip on the ice? Keep up with the latest styles and wear a beautiful green overcoat, is it? Hold it! Oh, she's cute. My lord, I do, I do hope it wouldn't cause any inconvenience, but... You'd like to change your leaning, I presume? I do declare that I would. Thank you. And I would do. What? <laughs> is it a crime to change your mind, is it? Well, no, 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 sorry. It's a shame she's racist. It's Britain. They're all racist. Okay. Trial continues. A 
Objection! Oh, here we go. Can you stop breaking the fucking... Could it seem churlish of me to drink from my hallowed chalice moments after raising an objection? Only to crush it in disgust? Pray forgive the discourtesy. Uh, Lord Van Zeeks. It seems I must retract my earlier remark. What do you mean? I mistakenly credited these jurors with intelligence by describing them as insightful. Yet we have just witnessed them falling for a cheap trick performed by an Eastern entertainer. Okay, ass wipe. Objection! I haven't tricked anyone. Indeed. Star Wars juror number five was undoubtedly repairing the road, as he claims. I believe you said it was a good two yards of the pavement which you had excavated, sir. That's right, took the whole day. They paid me a measly tuppence for it. Now, my learned Nipponese friend, tell me. Do you have any notion of the distance that two yards represents? Six feet? In other words, a distance readily vaulted by anyone of moderate vigor. Oh, well, that's great news because our guy is a fucking atrophied to shit. Would you not agree, my stalwart friend? And did you perchance erect a sign to prevent pedestrians from passing the site of your works? Uh, no? I guess theoretically he could, but he's not gonna. How about a wager, my learned friend? You say it was this old man the accused saw, but I would lay a thousand to one against you being able to prove it. My lord, if you had such a trenchant argument up your sleeve, why in the world did you not prefer it during the summation examination? I wanted to give this young foreign student the sightseeing experience he no doubt came for. I wanted him to see for himself how the opinion of the jury is so readily swayed. But my hospitality has its limits and they have been reached, I feel. Oh. So, my learned friend, today's sightseeing tour of London is now over. My lord! The prosecution requests permission to call the next witnesses to the stand. All right. What? Constable Rolly Beat, sir! Nothing to report on the street, sir! Mm. That's me. And I'm Mrs. Beat. Patricia's my name. And I'm proud to say that I'm this young town hero's wife. What's the story here? Well, in truth, we've not been married long. In fact, we celebrated our first anniversary the other day. MBD and Jillian? Yeah, that's true. Oh, no, it was your husband I was asking about. He seems tired. Hardly surprising. Whilst being an honorable occupation, patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world. Mm. 
But it goes without saying that a policeman's primary duty is the apprehension of criminals. Even when he's off duty, a constable is expected to investigate and resolve any crimes on his beat. For the London Bobby is a man of honor. And a man of slumber. On the day in question, this man and his wife were walking down Briar Road in the opposite direction. And they witnessed the incident as it occurred. Is that not correct, Mr. and Mrs. Beat? That's right. He's just EP. <laughs> it was our wedding anniversary and Rolly was taking me out for a meal. There was no time to change after work. Two silhouettes appeared out of the fog on the pavement in front of us. Hmm. Uh oh. What if they're racist? Weird. Very weird. What is that exactly? So in love. Shut up. God damn it. Good things shouldn't happen to other people. They should happen to me. I see I stepped away for a bit and we got 20 hours added. That's true.
Okay, that's enough of this. Oh, she's a, she's an army wife. Chucky1833, thank you for the thousand. Okay, so we are going to have to find the contradiction within this that isn't about the accused. Uh, this is insane. Okay, do. Jesus Christ. I really didn't mean to cause offense. Uh, please put your husband's fist down. <clears throat> 
He is just not into this. He's so fucked. Okay, do it, bitch. It. You won't. In fact, we actually have it right now. Okay, well, uh, we just got her here, right? Oh! He has a gun. It's not a very big gun. Oh, terrifying. I got it, I got it. I don't even need to look at it, but I will to appease you all. Boom. Objection! Objection, you stupid idiot. You moron. I'm sorry, Miss Beat. But there's a fundamental flaw in that statement of yours. Oh no! What, what, what flaw? There were three books. No, that can't be! I saw them! The big old lump of a dead body is blocking the view of the fourth book. Okay, then you could not have seen it either. Oh, wait. Uh, oh wait, I actually do have something. Hell yeah. We don't have the thing of me. Take that! Oh, thank God. The evidence is right here in the form of this bookshop receipt. From your books. Yes, this receipt de details Mr. Natsume's purchases that day. But as you can see, only three books are listed. Therefore, Mr. Natsume would only have dropped three books at the scene of the crime. Which means your powers of observation, madam, cannot be relied upon. So it cannot be denied that though you say it was the defendant you saw, you could very well be mistaken! Objection! <sighs> It's plainly evident that it is your powers of deduction that cannot be relied upon, my learned Nipponese friend. What? Do not fucking pour anything into the chalice. Might be, uh, might be a little bit fair. That might be exactly what we're doing. In what way? To the policeman's wife and her entirely accurate testimony, in every respect. The matter is not up for debate. Four books were found, but we know that are the accused only lost three. Quite right. Only three can be seen in that print. Oh my fucking god. No, come on. Uh, wait, what is going on with that book? Whoa! What the fuck? Put that shit in the record.
we're missing the lion's pride. Le coq. A meal for Gabrio. Gaborio. It's a book owned by the woman. But it doesn't belong to the victim. Interesting! So, there's a lot going on here. If you recall when we were able to speak with the Moon Man yesterday, we found that this is his favorite book, The Lion's Pride. But it was burned as it is here in his house. But if that's the case, how did it get outside? How interesting. Let's check this uh, thing right here. All right, well, it's exactly as it says on the tin. Come on, come on, come on, baby, 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 baby. Raise an objection. Objection. Borish. Hmm. For a lowly judicial assistant to have the audacity to intervene in a moment like this. I am to my shame still a very inexperienced lawyer. I consider my... You will have to forgive me, but I consider my assistant's advice essential and her opinions invaluable. You stinking ass bitch. Hmm. One of this land's great guiding, guiding principles is tolerance. Very well. The court has been presented with new evidence, but only after the last cross-examination finished. Uh, yes. I mean, I think it is. Defense wishes to present evidence, my lord. It's got to be this. Take that! The fourth book Objection. found in the victim's hand. We have already discussed the fourth book at length. Whoa. Okay, all right, okay, all right.
Got it! Got it! It's been burnt to a crisp! So we have to ask ourselves, why was the victim clutching what is clearly an unreadable book? It's an unnatural thing to have been doing. Objection! Unnatural, you say, and what of it? Oh! Were I to concede that point, if it bears no relation to the case, there is nothing to discuss. Should you wish to assure that there is fire damage some sort of veiled clue as to what happened that day, pray do enlighten us all. What truth does this charred book hide? Owner. I beg your pardon. You already know who the book belongs to. The victim was gripping it. It was obviously hers. No, that's not true. As to the question of who the book really belongs to, the defense has very credible answers. Very well. I'll play along with this futile attempt to delay your inevitable demise. But do remember the members of the jury may well burn you if your little gamble goes awry. The answer is that the book belongs to the couple who own the house where the defendant has his lodgings. A certain Mr. and Mrs. Garadev. The landlords! And whether this is some extraordinary coincidence or some kind of fated work, I don't know, but... Of all the people in London, one of the six chosen for jury duty in this courtroom today... Is none other than Mrs. Gary Deb herself. I think you must be mistaken, sir. I I'm the maid. Things would be so much easier if you would just drop this pretense. Alright then, how about a simple question for you? Have you seen this book in Mr. Gary Deb's house? I, I would never presume to know all the books he keeps, sir. Objection. This is outlandish behavior. The woman is the accused is the landlady, you say. You besmirch her without a shred of evidence. Objection. We have evidence. A domestic. Oh, he's fucked up. The lion's pride. Objection. Oh, dear me! This is risable! All you've told the court is that a book by the same name was involved in a fire. And what a shock. Perhaps it would make more sense if I told you the cause of the fire was marital discord. Without going into details, Mrs. Gardeb was considerably enraged. She continued to attack Mr. Gardeb even amid the flames. Oh, how awful. I love that we aren't calling this guy in to testify. We're just like, here's what he told us yesterday. The man had his back up against the window and he had burning books thrown at him. Goodness gracious, are you suggesting that the book was thrown through a window and lent coincidentally at the scene of a crime? Yes. A thorough investigation of the surrounding area was conducted the very evening of the incident. And there is no report of the guard Ebb's window pane being broken. That's quite true. We saw no signs of broken glass when we visited the household. But it is not conceivable the wind was open at the time and not even remotely. It is cold. No Londoner would ever leave a window open in the middle of winter. Uh, well, um... Yes. If it was on fire. That's quite enough! Foreign trickster.
Here we go. This guy sucks. No, come on! I'm passing a kidney stone! Oh my god! If books are your predilection, my learned friend, study them on your own time. What? No, forgive the discourtesy? Guilty! Guilty! Not good. Guilty! 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 Oh, damn it. We're gonna have to do this again? You know what we're gonna do. Hmm. Oh my god, that's it? Dyer, can you die? Chucky1833, thank you for the five. He loved casting spells. This is a hard one. None of these people seem contradictory. Stop fucking breaking the hallowed chalice. Who stabbed the woman and how? Give us a name and a method by which it was happening. Fucking hell. Bod, um, do we have a modcast put together for tonight? Marshmallowna Yu-Gi-Oh, thank you for typing out. Forgive his discourtesy for shadowing the hallowed chalice in the sacred ground, please. I want that shit spam. <laughs> when he does it. Okay. Well, not right now, when he does it. Hold it! Well... There were four books, and one is... Oh my god, I can't believe they're using this mechanic this way. This landlord fellow was at home. Well, anyway, the point is where the fellow and his wife were somewhere else. All right, let's go next. Joseph, I have a really great TikTok to share with you. This better not be a TikTok from Nim Nim. Who started racism? No facts, I was to know who oh, I've seen racism, this. Man. Oh no, I haven't. This is a new one. Who started racism? No facts, I was to know who started racism, man. <laughs> Hold it! 
So, you might be willing to change your decision, you mean? Oh my, such delight on your face, but I'm afraid I shan't be swayed by emotion. Despite what you may think of me, I'm a very modern, metropolitan, and rational woman. That's great. If one reads the morning papers, it's all forgotten by tea time, is it? So why not? So why read them in the first place? Okay. Shut the fuck up. Racist. <laughs> this is what's his name from the previous case, right? Why are we not remarking on that? Hold it! We're trying here. We are just trying. We gotta do what we gotta do. Hold it! But the little book was on fire at the time, was it not? With flames of love, I'll have you know. Uh huh. Well, he brought it upon himself. It's playing with fire to betray a fiery love, isn't it? Well, don't you agree? Um. Uh. Yes. It's probably he has a wife at home. Women. Hold it! Him and me both, Finn, like I said before. Told you already, I'm a day laborer. If I don't bring home some readies with me tonight, you'll find me floating face down in the Thames tomorrow morning. What? You heard me. My missus isn't one to mess about, you know. She can be fierce, believe you me. Jesus. None of the heterosexual people are, are doing well. Huh. Oh? Oh my god. Okay. I think I've got it. So, I'm a, I have a pit that I think is fine. I like pitting this guy against the old man. Protection. I'll try this out. Juror number three, do you see? Oh, me? See what, sir? Did you hear juror number six's account of his birthday celebration last year? It seems, despite being a Londoner, he once opened his windows in the middle of winter. Well, yes, of course, because it was an emergency. I mean, obviously, if the room was filled with smoke from a fire, you'd be mad not to open the... the... Oh! Exactly. On the day in question, at the time of the incident, there was a fire in the Garadeep household. Mr. Garadeep had the following to say about it. The whole place filled with smoke. Oh, my. oh, hey, bitch! Excuse me. Hey, what's going on here? Uh, 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 uh. Out with it! Oh, dearie me! 
How dare you imply I'm hiding who I really am? It's imperative you confirm something to the court. It's time to drop the pretense. What is it? When the fire started in your house that day, did you or your husband open the window? Oh, I beg your pardon? What are you insinuating? The room would have been thick with smoke after the carpet and bookcase caught fire as they did. In a situation like that, it's inconceivable you wouldn't have opened the window. And what if we did? We got a needle. Oh, all right then. Yes, you're right. My husband was frantically trying to open the window, which can't have been easy since I continued to give him a justly deserved book battering. Let's pit these two again. Mm. Well, I really couldn't say. I did. It was the first thing I could lay my hands on, so I hurled it straight at him. Now you come to mention it, yes. He was rather enjoying reading it, you're right. Because I couldn't, you insolent little man, I didn't remember. Oh, boy. Oh! Hello! Excuse me! Hey! Five! What's going on here, buddy? What is it, your number five? Uh, you know something? Uh, I've remembered what it was, the memory I blocked out. Ah. It was listening to what this granny was saying, brought it all flooding back. Who are you calling a granny? Please tell me it's not because you're so used to being hit all the time. That is a disaster. Really? Or the uh, Suzato takedown. She's so cute. Oh man. This man's words could be rather significant, I think. I mean, that's a, that's a really great statement, right? Your wife threw a kitchen knife at you? Hide a tiny edge on it. Oh. A bathtub. Okay, so he's misogynist, but he has a good reason. Okay, well, um, let's start pitting. Objection! Juror number two, do you think perhaps that this could be one such novel alternative? Oh my, whatever do you mean? An alternative explanation as to how the victim was stabbed in the back. What are you talking about? We've demonstrated that the fourth book, The Lion's Pride, that was found at the scene of the crime, originated in Mr. Garadib's room on the top floor of his house. It's equally possible some other object besides the book could have found its way from the Garadib household to the street below. Huh? After all, Mr. Garadib could have thrown any number of different objects at her husband. Isn't that right, Jer number four? What are you insinuating now, you little beanpole? pole? 
Now you listen here, you- Whoa! Hmm. I have an evidence. Scared you. What? What now? I must apologize in advance for this. But I need you to confirm something for the court. This knife. Have you seen this knife before? Mm. That's the weapon! I just want to know. My lord, remember what... That when the victim was attacked, Mr. and Mrs. Garadib were in the throes of an argument. Mrs. Garadib was hurling anything she could at her husband who had been backed up against the window. A window that had been opened to clear smoke and through which a book sailed to land the crime scene. You can't believe that! The book was found in the victim's grasp! Are you saying it flew across the window and across the street and lay neatly in your hand? Ugh! No, no, no. Miss Garadib, your answer, please. Have you seen this knife before or not? Um, ah! Well, that's a yes. I wish to change my decision. Thank you, madam. Whoa! I'll take him. Mr. Foreman! I'd have to agree. Not that I think the granny did it. Hey, you know what? Let's go. All right, we got four of them. Let's keep schmoving. <sighs> Fuck it, we ball, we ball, we ball, we ball. Do you think we're gonna get a reputation as the guy who does summation examinations? We're so fucking back. We're so fucking back. This, this mechanic is just it's over. It's so over. I need to kill myself. And then we're so fucking back. We're so fucking back. <laughs> this trial is rapidly descending into a farce. <laughs> like a corked wine, the first few sips are bitter enough. But what follows is so repugnant. It's good for nothing save the gutter. If I may, Lord Van Zeeks, fuck you, you stupid bitch. Credible? Is that your considered opinion, Mr. Foreman? The defense's argument is a joke to which I barely know how to respond. But let me start by insisting that you must all familiarize yourselves better with the relative positions of those places being discussed. This is the last thing we can't resolve. It should already be more than apparent that between the crime scene and the Garadip household runs a rather wide street, Briar Road. Which means that the distance from the Garadip's house to the scene is 15 yards. Ugh. And now you ladies and gentlemen of the jury, jury rightly noted as having portentous significance, fourth book was found in the victim's clutches. So this one isn't hard. No, not at all. And did the jackknife follow an identical trajectory to plunge into the middle of the victim's back? Oh, come on. The book flew out of the place, she bent down to pick it up, and then the knife came afterwards and stabbed her. How is this hard for him to grasp? That prosecutor loves the sound of his own voice. Serialized detective stories are pathetic, are they? How dare he? Uh, maybe let's pick our battles here. My lord, might I be allowed to speak? Uh, sure. The prosecution may consider the idea a fantasy, but what the defense has postulated was believable enough to persuade the jury to change its leaning. And as such, the court has a duty to explore this alternative explanation as thoroughly as possible. To that end, chair number four must be called to testify and submit to cross-examination. Oh, holy fucking shit. This is irregular. It is unprecedented. Objection! Objection! 
and unnecessary. There are already witnesses in the stand whose testimony the defense may further cross-examine if my learned friend's farcical theory has any truth to it. Both a burning book and a jackknife must have thro flown through the sky before this couple's eyes. We must assume they would be able to testify accordingly. Uh, no? Oh, here we go. Well, good morning, officer. Sorry for dozing ill now, sir. I haven't slept for a month on account of a villain who's appeared on my beat, sir. <sighs> this is me and Jillian. This case has nothing to do with this. Fuck. Okay, this guy isn't really me, but um... No, sir! I'm sorry, but... What exactly is a top-hinged casement window? And you... You cannot excuse your ignorance with such trite remarks, my learned friend. Oh, I don't know what that is, either. What is in that book? see the problem then. Good, your education in windows is complete. There was never any possibility of either the book or the knife traveling 15 yards over the road. That is, unless the window pane had been shattered, something we've discounted already. We are fucked. Get up. Did. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Hydrarian, can you please stop speculating in chat? Again, spoilers are a perma. If it turns out that Sting or Flynn stabbed them, I'm I'm gonna be bur I'm gonna be banning you for sure. Anonymous user, thank you for the 10 gifties. Beep, 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 beep. Dodge and chat if you didn't get one. We got a we did get it.
Objection. Oh. Music did not stop. Excuse me. This is interesting. It's very interesting. Hold it! Hold it! God. In short. Hold it!
Oh no. Yes. Uh, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, you you've been a fine witness. Uh, yes. Oh, good. All right. One more. One more. I heard that. That Japanese man thinks the policeman's wife would- Oh my god. Go ahead. Go, 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 go. Hold it! Nobody is questioning what you've told us. Yes, I mean, he's admitted to that. That's a little racist. Oh, yes. That's a little embarrassing, really. I'm always ending up at the wrong place when I've made arrangements to meet Roll. Yeah. It's ever so cross. Oh. Excuse me! You stinking ass sleepy man. Constable B! Huh? Uh, no, sir. No problem, sir. Oh, well, in a way, sir. I just remember the same thing happened to that evening, is all. Oh. All right, we have resolved the issue. I sent her off to find a police box in the next beat over for mine, but she was gone a fair bit longer than I was expecting. How romantic. For sure. We are getting very far with this. Hold it! I guess we fucking have it. That's a bouquet Roly bought me for our anniversary. Maybe just call it a rose. According to the report by the police officer in charge of the crime scene of the investigation, it's found on the edge of the pavement in front of the Gary Depp household. Oh, wait, hold up. That's very interesting. I don't really know how... There's a couple of things that are just kind of sticking in my craw. But I just don't know how to get them together. Just make sure there's nothing crazy on this fucking bouquet real quick. I uh, know it looks pretty normal. Hmm. 
nothing crazy about the rows, but let's... Let's just go through this in our head again. This beat has a pretty bad sense of direction. She dropped it on one side of the road and it magically went over to the other side of the road. But the side of the road that it went to is in Rolly's beat. Before it wasn't. Oh, he, he's way ahead of me. Uh, we've got some options for what we can uh, present, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little scumming. Objection. Yeah. You claim there was nothing to report in the 15 or so minutes you were guarding the scene, but that can't be. In your testimony just now, Miss Beat, you explained to the court that when you arrived back at the scene of the crime with the policeman assigned to the beat, the bouquet you had dropped at the victim's side was no longer any Objection! Uh, objection! Yes, on the opposite side of Briar Road where the victim was attacked. Considering the size of that meager bouquet, if a single solitary bloom could be so described, no doubt it was blown in the wind across the street back into the gutter where it belongs. Objection! Sir. Van Zeeks, you're kind of being a bitch here. If that were the case, why did Constable Beat not testify to that fact? But the bouquet belonged to me. It had nothing to do with the case. That's why he didn't mention it, I'm sure. No, because sadly, it's not only your bouquet we're talking about. More than one thing in this case is mysteriously the wrong way round. Think about it. Besides Miss Beat's bouquet, there's Mr. Gardeb's book. Mr. Gardeb's copy of the Lion's Pride ended up on the wrong side of the road. Meanwhile, according to the testimony, the Beats, Beats Bouquet should have dropped here at the scene of the crime on the east side of the street, but in fact, it was actually on the opposite side. There's no logical explanation for those things, unless somebody deliberately moved them. What are you trying to say? The way you're talking, it sounds like you think my Rolly's done something wrong. Don't listen to a wall, oh, ba ba ba. You might call it nitpicking, Miss Garadab, but deliberately meddling with the scene of the crime is a criminal offense. It's called uh, tampering. But the person responsible for the tampering cannot admit to it for a very subtle but Objection. compelling reason. Tampering. You've barely heard the term before. Who would have possibly had cause to carry out such an elaborate deception? Oh, Jesus. Closed circle! Thank you for the 20 gifties! Holy shit! I mean, probably Joan, right? Baron Van Zeeks. We got a Guido. Take that! No, 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 no. The 
opportunity. Well, it's gotta be, it's gotta be Rolly Beal then. But why would he do it? Take that! Obviously, there's only one person it could have been. Constable Rolly B. What? A policeman? A member of Scotland Yard? What nonsense? Why would my Rolly do something like that? There's no one straighter than my husband. Ah, damn it. No Bobby works more tirelessly for the people of London. Miss Beat, you said in your testimony that your husband asked you to go to a nearby police box to fetch the officer on duty. The 15 minutes you were absent from the scene is the only opportunity anyone had to tamper with it. Oh God, did he tamper with it so that it was someone else's prerogative and he didn't have to investigate it because he's so tired? Objection. That's a fun motive. Objection. Objection. First you make accusations about the landlord and his wife and now you incriminate a policeman as well. Real calm you are, thank you for the gifting. But your accusations lack one very important thing. You claim this crime scene was tampered with. But there's only one reason anyone would commit such a reckless crime. To hide something. You've offered no motive for this alleged tampering. And until you do, your accusations are nothing but empty threats. But that's where you're wrong, you stinking ass idiot. I have a motive. Counsel, you have made a very serious accusation. If you are mistaken, your reputation as a lawyer will be damaged. You will now explain to the court the motive for this tampering. Yes, my lord. Was to hide. For the victim. Where the victim fell to the ground. What? Where the victim fell? You mean where she was attacked? What are you talking about? We told you at the very start, didn't we? On the pavement of Briar Road, we saw it happen! Oh, well, the pavement of Briar Road could be anyone. That's certainly what everybody has been led to believe. But in fact, that isn't where the victim was stabbed at all. What? Oh my god. Their scarf connects in the back. You can see from the back, it connects to each other. If that's your assertion, the court is dying to know my Nipponese friend. Where are you proposing the crime actually took place? Well, the only place it could have. Take that. Here! But, but that's on the opposite side of the road. I don't understand. On the evening in question, Mr. Garadeb's book fell directly from the open window above, and your bouquet never moved at all. What did move was the scene of the crime itself. Good gracious! Objection! Objection! Perhaps you haven't been listening to the ample testimony this court has heard. But these witnesses both saw the moment the attack took place. That's right, I saw it with my own eyes! It was five o'clock in the evening and already dark. There was the typical London fog on the ground. When you saw the incident unfold and ran to the victim to aid, that was actually the west side of Briar Road. No, that's not true, it can't have been! Constable Beat then arranged for you to be absent for a while by sending you to help. And during the 15 minutes you were away, he transplanted the crime scene. He moved all the things shown in this print, the victim herself, the four books, to the pavement on the east side of Briar Road. That's why she's holding the book. He thought it was a book that had been dropped. But the constable overlooked one thing. The bouquet. Exactly. The prosecution told the court just a few minutes ago about the discovery of the bouquet. Lord Van Zeek said it wasn't noticed until the morning as it lay where the street lamps cast no light. It couldn't be seen in the dark. Which is why it was only the bouquet that was found in its original position on the pavement on the west side of Briar Road. And that is the defense's theory about what really happened that evening. How do you respond, Constable Roly Beat? Um, I'm very sorry.
Oh no. Good golly! Order! What on earth is the meaning of all this? Oh, Roly, why? Moving a corpse is a criminal offense! Constable, explain yourself. Why would you do this? She is still alive. I, I can't say, sir. We know why it is. I really am ever so sorry about all this. For damaging the Yard's reputation. For, for everything. I have an explanation. For why, on that particular evening, Constable Beat felt compelled to move the scene of the crime. I can think of one reason. What? How could you possibly know? You were a foreigner, presuming to understand the mind of a Scotland Yard policeman. And yet, Lord Van Zeeks, it is this foreigner who has uncovered the startling truth of the matter thus far. I believe it would be beneficial to the court to hear this extraordinary young lawyer's theory. Counsel for the defense, if you please. Uh, yes, my lord. Now, I think you had better show us some evidence. At once, my lord. I realize that I'm a foreigner in this land. I have only just arrived from Japan. Which is why all this information about London's so-called bobbies is completely new to me. I've learned that though honorable, patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world, for example. Keeping the peace, looking after citizens on his beat in all kinds of ways, there's no doubt the young bobby is charged with a bunch of shit. But for Constable Beat, the day in question was special. Special? How? On account of this bouquet, my lord. Oh yes! It was our very first wedding anniversary! Constable Beat had worked so hard to be able to afford this simple gift for his wife, and was so looking forward to taking her out for a celebratory meal, when he and Miss Beat stumbled upon a crime along Briar Road. When he saw that shadowy figure through the fog collapse on the pavement ahead of them, it must have gone through the man's mind. But sir! I was looking forward to celebrating my anniversary. This is the warrant card that Constable Beat offered to lend me earlier. Inside of the rules for patrolling policemen, it says, When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with initial investigations and help detectives. Constable Beat... Is that, or is that not, the reason why he moved the whole scene of the crime that day? Yes. Everything you said, it's all right. So that's it. It was all to do with the boundary of your beat. Exactly. To summarize, the incident actually occurred on Constable Beat's beat. Good gracious! Constable, do you realize the gravity of what you've done? It was the first time since I became a copper that I'd ever cursed God. Holy shit! Jesus Christ. Fucking eepiest man alive drops the hardest line in the entire game. As we ran over to the scene, I had every intention of doing my duty as a police officer. But then it dawned on me. I realized where we were, where the victim was lying what that meant for me. Why here? Why did this have to happen here? And why tonight of all nights? Why? Maybe you weren't supposed to be a copper. It's a copper's job to guard the scene of the crime, so I told Pat she'd have to go to the nearest police box and fetch whoever was on duty there. It was then when I opened my mouth to speak, it just came out. I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of me own mouth. This is the next beat to mine, Pat. You'll have to go to the police box that covers it. Turn right along M Mia Scalm Street and then... Oh, 
<laughs> Let the man take a fucking rest. Can you tell us, Constable, how many books you moved from one side of the road to the other in total? Um, four it was. Yes, sir. Definitely four. What made you place the book in the victim's hand? Oh, well, sir, it's because that's how I found it. How you found it? What do you mean? We first ran over to the scene. Oh, this actually makes sense. Book fell out, she bends down to pick it up, knife goes directly down into her back. Oh yes, sir. No doubt about it, sir. Hmm, interesting. My lord. I believe that concludes the cross-examination of the witnesses. Constable, you may withdraw. Yes, sir. He will stand trial, probably. This trial is not yet over. Okay. Come on, honey, let's go home and have straight sex. <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah, great. What a startling revelation, I must say. Whoever thought of a third party transplanting the entire scene of a crime like that? Indeed, my lord. Nevertheless, there are some immutable facts here, principally that the accused, Mr. Soseki Natsume, is the only person to go- Oh my Objection. god, we're still on this. Well, now guess what, asshole? Now that we know the scene, there is someone else, another person who could be responsible for the knife. The prosecution is probably well aware of this possibility already. Lord Venzix, is this true? Very well. Name the person, if you will. And a further investigation is warranted. The prosecution has no objection. Well, it has to be her. Take that! The defense would like again to request the crux examination of a new witness, my lord. Once again, my assistant made the same request earlier. In order to finally reveal the truth about this case, it's imperative we cross examine juror, juror number four, Miss Joan Garadeb. Get her on the objection. fucking stand. Objection! That request has already Objection. been denied. Uh, well, guess what, asshole? Things change. What do you want now, you little toad? At the time of the incident, you were enga engaged in a violent argument with your husband, Mr. Joan Garadep. In the course of the argument, a minor house fire was ignited, and to clear the smoke from the room, your husband opened a window that looks over Briar Road. Well, what of it? You threw this book at your husband when he was cornered with his back against the window. Upon striking the pane of the top open casement window, the book plummeted directly down, finding its way to what we now know to be the true scene of the incident. Yes, and as I said, what of it? During the argument, you were beside yourself with rage. As such, you threw not just books, but anything you could lay your hands on. So, let me ask you one more time, Mrs. Garadab. This knife. Have you never laid eyes on it before? I don't recall it. 
seriously. Am I supposed to remember everything I picked up and threw at my husband? And anyway, the man over there and all that regalia said members of the jury needn't testify, didn't he? Conveniently, yes. Objection! No. I have no recollection of saying that at all. Juror number four. Oh. Make no mistake. You jurors are not special in any way. You are not immune to the judicial process. If you know something about this knife, madam, let the truth come out. Uh, but that's just a common or garden knife! It could have come from anywhere! We have several like that at home. If, if one went missing, how would you expect me to know? What's that? Are you joking? Now you listen to me! I refuse to believe all this nonsense! I couldn't bear the thought that I'd injured someone. Do you hear? I couldn't bear it! Oh, the poor woman. Oh, the poor woman, the poor woman. I want evidence! Oh. Jesus Christ, I don't have evidence like that. Or do I? <laughs> yeah. Then take the stand, juror. Oh! The prosecution does not object to the defense's request to cross-examine this woman. Thank you, Lord Benzies. I I'm going to have to testify? Get your ass up there. Whew. Oh, dearie me. <laughs> this case is so good. Certainly, my lord. Oh, uh, that's what I'm hoping for, my lord. This is such a strange feeling. It actually feels real. I'm here, in the Old Bailey, and I'm a lawyer. Yes, sir. God damn, he's doing it too. The quiet life. Were you not engaged in an incendiary battle with your spouse on the day in question? Ah, well, uh, yes, I am. <laughs> Quite. I believe this may represent a first in the proud history of the British court. Calling a juror to the witness stand is unprecedented. Alright, here we go. So if she's actually his wife, is the maid thing like a kink thing, or, uh, it's a standing thing. You're expected, if you're a member of high society, to have at least one maid. to do it. This cross X has to be good. We have no other options. Hold it! The reason is what you told us yesterday, I believe. Hmm. 
What a sordid state of affairs. Hell on earth. I say, when a chap says he can't recall such things, it's common decent to see not to drag it up. A likely story. These waters run very deep. He's a cheater? No! A book that he had purchased had a love note in it from its previous owner. It's not even addressed to him. It's so funny. She just saw the love note and she was like, I'm gonna kill you. Hold it! A likely story. <laughs> the bookcase, my armchair, anything of mine, really. It just so happens there was some bath water around this evening, so I sloshed it about to put it out. Ours is a three-story townhouse on the west side of the street, and the water main isn't connected yet. Have to draw water from a public water pump during the day if you need any, is it? Interesting. Hardly. <laughs> was a knife among among the items that you threw at your husband that day. By Jupiter! By Jupiter! Excuse me! Hey, dude. Do you have something to add, sir? Mm. Mr. Garadeb. Hmm? Uh, don't shoot! Ah, uh, sorry. I beg your pardon. Did your wife's remark bring something to your mind? Uh, nothing of any significance, no. Just that the barrage of projectiles was somewhat more uh, solid than she implies. Books, bricks, and the fire poker, I seem to recall. And the woman's aim is uncanny. Ah! Good grief, woman. We're not at home now. This is a court of law. Yeah, how'd you get the teapot in here? We'll take a look at this, then. How do you suppose that happened, hmm? Your pipe's in. Oh, yes, it's tied up. The pipe was broken. Oh, man. That's got to be the knife. Oh, my God. We're going to find the tip of the knife in there. Objection! Fuck off. This war veteran's words only tell us one thing. Betray a fiery wife and pipes as well as hearts may be broken. Sentimental wisdom, perhaps, but hardly worthy of adding to the formal testimony. Would you at least permit us to examine the pipe, sir? Hmm? Well, well I don't see why not. Well, well, well. No, that's helpful. Suzato is so great. She's lovely. Alright, fucking rip this thing open. Well, well, well! What have we here? I think I would actually have a pretty easy job proving it. Hey, how, how much do you know about this fucking thing, idiot? Objection. Mr. Garadab, could I ask you to take a good look at this, please? You can ask, but I can't see a bolly thing. You can't? You used to call me Dead Eye Deb back in the regiment, of course. That was some time ago now. You must de very dizzy. <laughs> what is that? A tiny scrap of metal. Yes, almost certainly from the tip of a blade. And what may appear at first to be a tiny scrap is in fact a crucial piece of evidence. Interesting. 
And where did the defense come by this evidence? It was lodged in the chamber of Mr. Gardeff's pipe. My pipe, you say? By Jove, I wonder how that got in there. And what does this metal signify? Are you suggesting it is some way related to the matter of the stabbing? Absolutely. What? When put together with another piece of evidence already in the court record, I believe this fragment of metal will unravel the whole truth of this case, my lord. Look at his fucking asshole! <laughs> it's all ripped up. <laughs> Take that! This is the knife that was found in the victim's back. If you look closely, you will see that there is a small piece at the tip of the blade that is missing. He got his dussy dirt. That's correct. A common issue with inferior blades sold at unsavory street markets. Close! This is a British person. No doubt its tip has suffered a similar fate, now languishing somewhere near the spine of the victim. Oh, well, let's just see, dumbass. The tip of this particular knife's blade is the very fragment of metal we discovered in the chamber of Mr. Gardab's pipe. Ugh. Good grief! Lord Van Zeeks! I don't believe it! The knife from the crime scene and this fragment of metal are a perfect match! Good golly gosh! Oh no! Is this some sort of eastern sorcery? Fuck off. This is no magic, my lord. This is a miracle. Council, explain this extraordinary coincidence at once. Yes, my lord. The crucial point we have to ask ourselves here is when did the fragment of metal find its way inside Mr. Garadeb's pipe? Something that was clarified for us in the most recent witness testimony. Uh-oh. Oh, dearie me. During the argument between the two that occurred just as the victim was on the pavement below, Mr. Garadib flung this knife at her husband. However, the knife missed Mr. Garadib, instead striking the pipe in his hand at the time, which caused the tip to break off, of course. Good lord! Yes, and that is when the tiny tip of the blade found its way inside Mr. Garadib's pipe. The, the chances of that are a million to one! And yet, there's no other explanation for how the tip of the blade ended up in your pipe. Then, after losing its tip, the knife ricocheted off the pipe and flew out the open window. Uh... In short, this knife, which fell from the window of the Gardeb's house, is the very same knife that struck the victim in the middle of the back on the street below! Ooh, his burnt ass Objection! Oh, hello. I know what he's gonna say. He's gonna say, then why did it hit her back? Let's go, baby! One more chalice! A full-bodied theory, I'll give you that. A complex bouquet of seemingly trivial points plausibly arranged to create an almost passable vintage. Allow me to toast my learned friend's characteristically Nipponese approach to bottling his argument. Sorry? But after all, it is just a theory. The bottle, I fear, is corked. Because you see... Oh! It's spoilt by an insurmountable inconsistency. Lord Van Zeeks, explain yourself! What is this inconsistency? An inconsistency of the simplest nature, my lord. The victim was found with the knife planted in the middle of her back. Oh, I'm two steps ahead of you, you stinking ass idiot! That's right! You silly little man! Now, Joan, old thing, what are you getting so excited about? Let us consider the basic facts of the case once more. The victim was walking along the pavement before being stabbed in the back and falling to the ground. If the knife that struck her had fallen from above... <laughs> there's no possible way it could have planted itself into the victim's back. I'm passing a kidney stone. Hope you had a good stream, you cast. Quite right, you see, that's exactly right. If the knife had fallen from above, it would have struck her on the top of the head! Well, uh, I can actually explain this. It's pretty easy. Hmm. It would appear the defense has made a rather spectacular blunder. If a theory has even one inconsistency, it cannot stand. Your theory. 
is history. No, no, we know the answer. We know the answer, Ryanosuke. We can do it. Suzato is so great. You mustn't worry, Mr. Narahodo. You were just caught off guard, that's all, and your mind went blank. If the path you were on is indeed correct, then a way will present itself. The key is in the court record. I fucking don't know what I would... Inconsistency doesn't mean I was on the wrong track. It means I need to sharpen my mind and dig deeper for the truth. It's a test. Yes. If the knife fell on the victim from above, there's no way it could have hit her in the middle of her back. Under normal circumstances. What are you implying? There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can explain this inconsistency. That can explain how the knife that fell from above could have pierced the victim's back. We already have the answer. I, I think I know what they want me to present, but... Oh, God. Take that! The fourth book found at the scene. This is the final piece of evidence the defense will present. The burnt book. Is that not Mr. Garadeb's book? Yes, and to understand its significance, we have to consider how it came to be at the scene in the first place. This photographic print clearly shows the book in question, and the victim holding it in her hand. But as we all now know, it was the police constable that put the book between her fingers. Quite so. That's true. However, as part of his testimony, Constable Beat made an extremely enlightening statement on that point. found it that way. It's crazy that I figured out the entirety of this case 20 minutes ago. In other words, the victim had already picked the book up of her own volition, and clearly that must have been before she suffered the knife wound. Well, I should say so! It, it's crazy, because some of the old Ace Attorney games, it was like you would never have gotten it, the, the thing figured out. It was just, there was so much bullshit in it. It's a nice that they put something that normal people could figure out. By Jingo! I think I'm beginning to see what may have happened now. Oh, dearie me. We know that the book fell from the top floor of the Garadeb household onto the pavement below, at precisely the moment that the victim was walking past. At exactly that moment, the young woman was walking along the street in a light fog when all of a sudden, a book fell in front of her. The book I threw. Yes, Miss Garadab. And what do you think the woman did? What would you do if you were walking along and suddenly a book landed in front of you on the pavement? Uh, well, I, I really can't imagine it. But I suppose she might have reached down. Oh, she's cute. And picked the book up? Yes, that is exactly what the woman in fact did. She picked up the book. Oh, heavens! And when the woman reached down to pick up the fallen book... What position would her back have been in? That's right. Facing the sky, completely and utterly defenseless. Then, in the very next moment, while the woman was still bent, picking over the book... <laughs> the next object fell from the room above, the jackknife straight into the middle of her back. And at the same time, walking by chance directly behind her, was the defendant, Mr. Soseki Natsume. Well, I never... It appeared to Mr. Natsume that the woman collapsed onto the floor. In the dark and in the fog, he didn't see the knife falling on her from above. Ah! And from the other direction, the constable and his wife saw no one but the victim in her apparent attacker. So there never was a real culprit to run from the scene in the first place. No, this was nothing more than a series of unlikely events that culminated in an unfortunate accident. 
And that is the real truth behind this case. Well, Mr. and Mr. Mrs. Garadeb? The very first time you showed me that knife, I, I had my suspicions. I wondered if perhaps it might have been something like that. There, there, old bean. Poor Mrs. Garadip. Of course, I never meant for anything of the sort to happen, but it was all my fault, wasn't it? Well, I hope the woman recovers, because this is a case in which I really hope no one goes to prison. I take full responsibility. I let my anger get the better of me. I threw the book, and I threw the knife as well. John, dear. It's all right, I know. Oh, They love each other in their own disgusting way. I'm sorry, sir. Oh, not his knee! <sighs> Whew. Being heterosexual in the Ace Attorney series is exhausting. She's been taken to the infirmary. It would appear that today's events have left her in an especially flustered state. However, I believe she will recover in due course. There's no cause for concern. There is some good news, however, my lord. I have just had word from the hospital where the victim is being treated. Her condition is improving steadily, and the doctor believes she will regain consciousness soon. Great! No harm, no foul. That is good news. Yes? On behalf of my fellow countrymen, I would like to take this opportunity to beg your pardon, sir. You came from your distant eastern homeland to study our great British culture and have been repaid with immeasurable unkindness. Please accept our heartfelt apologies. No, it is me who should be begging your pardon. Uh, oh no, Mr. Natsume. That evening, when that young woman just collapsed on the pavement before my eyes, I jumped to the wrong conclusion again in my confusion. What conclusion, sir? I was sure the woman was dead. It's been about a year since I arrived in Great Britain now, but I still can't get used to life here. I can't relax. I'm sure there are evil spirits lurking in the fog, like they're haunting me. Poor Soseki-san. So when it happened, I thought the young woman had been taken by the fog spirits. I should have never dropped my books like that and run away. I should have called for help, for a doctor, for the police! <clears throat> Instead, I've managed to create a rift in the relationship of trust between our two empires. And for that, I am truly sorry. What a nice young man! One could indeed say that there was some sort of mischievous spirit has been at work here, I think. One that created a chain of unfortunate mishaps. We were befooled by the spirit and led to false conclusions. But thanks to Lord Van Zeeks and our young lawyer here from the East, that chain has now been broken and the spirit exercised. I heartily commend you both. Oh, thanks. This guy lost. Maybe commend him a little less. Now then, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Yes, my lord. In concluding this trial, I must ask one last time for your decisions regarding the defendant's culpability. Are you ready to present your findings to the court? As the foreman of this jury, I can assure you we've reached a fair and just conclusion. I do declare the truth can be extremely cruel at times. I'm the hat guy. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> Not guilty. <laughs> Not guilty. Not guilty. Not 
Let's get the fireworks going. Woo! Happy ending. Uh, well, we are still dealing with the Reaper of the Old Bailey, so Mr. Soseki Natsume might fucking die. I loved this guy. This guy was great. Everyone in this case was nice. I didn't I didn't dislike any of it. Oh, locum. Oh, wait, you you mean me? Of course. Is there another locum here? Is there even one? Compared to the original locum student Mr. Naruhodo Esquire, your name has become rather short, hasn't it? What's wrong with using my actual name? Oh, at last! Uh oh, no, this is him. I'm free, I'm free! Joyful, joyous, jubilant, jubilation! Heady, hearty, happiness, hurrah! Oh, I am pleased. Mr. Natsume is delighted. Would it be so hard just to say that, then? Locum, you did it! You saved me from the brink! Well, what happened to the poor woman was in no way your fault, after all. I'm just glad everyone can see that now. No, 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 not that! Lovely, loyal, locum, lawyer! Uh, yeah? I mean, as I said before, I have just never gotten used to life here in Great Britain. Every time I look over my shoulder, I see foreigners. I see towering brick buildings. And from high up windows, I see them looking down on me, laughing. Look at that little hunchback. Oh dear, I'm sure it's all in your head, Mr. Natsume. Uh, but... Today, you locum lawyer gave my gloom the boot. You stood firm behind that baronial bench before all those babbling British. You battled to the bitter end, laying bare the baffling truth. And when I beheld the blinding fireworks among the beams of the Bailey's roof, I bellowed, Behold, the best barrister ever born! Well, that's very flattering, and we're very pleased for you. This has given me a wonderful anecdote to recount to my old friends back in Japan. Great. Fuck! Hey. Oh? It's... just finished. What? No! Then my haste was in vain! Urgh, it's... it's you! Hairlock Shoals! Oh? Have we met, sir? Um, this is Mr. Natsume. The man you had arrested, Mr. Sholmes. I see. I failed to recognize you at first. Our previous encounters have taken place in the gloom, either your bleak lodgings or that prison cell. I simply couldn't place that curious face in the light. Charming. This is all your fault, Hairlock Sholmes! You're the reason I had to go through this terrible ordeal! I'm going to give you a piece of my mind! My apologies, sir, but I assure you, I have placed you now. You're the fellow who abandoned that poor lady and ran off, are you not? Ah. Had she been taken to hospital more urgently, I feel perhaps she would have regained consciousness by now. Oh. But it was unavoidable, I'm sure. feel very, very badly about how I behave. Well, never mind. Now then, what was it you wanted to say to me, sir? Uh-oh. Nothing. <laughs> priceless! Oh, I am sorry, really, but... That was quite priceless. It's, it's, he's, he's so good. There's no bright side. Yeah. Even after this, I'm... I'm still cursed by the spirits and... And now by the Reaper! Ah, uh, yeah. Right, yeah. Why would she do it to me?
get rotated. <laughs> so, Mr. Natsume, what do you intend to do now? Yes. <laughs> they just put an author in here. Why would we? It's been a week. You could take my lodgings! Oh, we're good. Oh! Oh, we will take it. Say, Gex! A free meal? You got it. Um, it's not that bad. London is a glorious place full of wonder, opportunity, prosperity, and mirth. But the brightest of lights cast the darkest of shadows. Shadows? What do you mean? Well, I believe you're well aware of the murkiness that lies behind London's facade already. So once again, Mr. Naruhodo. Welcome to London. Monka S. I figured it out. Sholmes is Narahodo's mate sprit. Suzato is his morale. Van Zeeks is his kissemesis, and Iris is the auspitus for him and Gina. Who's Gina? Gina Lestrade. Uh, yeah, I guess. I don't like that last one, but the other three are spot on. Wow. 
What a crazy one. And what good timing. Let's watch the 